now we're going to take all this newly learned information and then put it into something that will hopefully be a lot of fun. We're going to create an NPC, a non-player character. Something that's in our scene but not driven by the player. Something that, for want of a better word, uses AI. It makes its own decisions based on things in the scene and then acts on those decisions. So let's get into it. First I'm going to create a new scene because we're going to be prototyping our scripts out in a test scene before we go ahead and build it into something elaborate. Let's save our scene. It's going to be a prototype. We're going to prototype our MPC. Let's just quickly build a rough scene as I have before. Create a cube. Call it floor. Gonna position it, give it a scale. And from our materials that we got, from the textures that we found, I'm gonna apply some floorboards. I'm gonna create a directional light. Now I like to lift the light right up the sky out of the way but it's still there just out of our way okay now when prototyping we build what's called a character stand-in this is usually a capsule because as you've seen with the unity controllers quite often use a capsule collider because it's the best thing for working around areas Let's name that before we go too far. This is our NPC. Well, let's create a material for him. I'm just going to use a color. Okay, use your material. NPC is normally considered to be enemies, so I'm going to make him red. And to give a sense of direction, so we know which way he's facing, let's give him a couple of googly eyes. Because of these are just going to be graphics, and that's how you can see. Because they're just going to be representation of something. They're not going to be. I don't need the colliders, so I'm going to remove the sphere colliders from that. And position his eyeballs. There we go. Nothing special. Oh, often of course, make them a child of your NPC. So of course, wherever the NPC goes, the eyeballs go. There we go. Get a sense of direction. We know which way he's looking. Outstanding. There we are. Quality. <laughs> okay, of course, check as with the character controller. We are not penetrating the floor. This will come in later. Okay, so we've created an NPC. We want to create a script so we can drive him. See movement. That'll do for now. We're just working on moving him around. Similarly, we want to stand in for the player. So I'm actually going to duplicate the NPC. I'm going to rename that to player. This will be our player stand in. Let's create the material for our player. Again, just a default. Color that I can use across several things. Do that one. I'm going to call that red. Okay, good enough. Let's bring our player out so we can see him. There he is. And give him a different material so we can see what's going on. There we are. So we've got a couple of character stand-ins to represent our player and our NPC or our animal. So, back to the NPC. So we've created a script. Let's attach that now. Because we've built our scene, we're quite happy with that. Let's save the scene before we forget. Okay, 
now I'm with a script. So, so far we've been looking at the transform component of these objects and then manipulating the position of that transform to move things around. Now, if I draw your attention to the Unity scripting reference before we start, let me jump down to performance optimization. Now, a lot of useful information here, please read it all. But for now, we're just going to focus on this one, part three caching components or caching component lookups. Okay, a bit of coding, really not much coding, we're going to do that now. So, how does this work? Why is this making it more optimal? If we look at our vector 3 example, I used our local transform, I've used the transform of the game object that this script is attached to quite a lot. Okay, so we've got a couple of transform calls there. Now, what you may not realize. There are a bit of get component going on here. So if we type in transform dot position, that is the same saying this transform dot position, which is basically referencing the game object dot transform position. So when you use transform position there is actually a bit of get component working behind the scenes. Okay, we're talking to the game object and we're asking the game object for its transform component. So, as that optimization page describes, let's close that without saving. If you're going to make a lot of calls to your transform, you're better off cacheing it, storing it a reference of that transform in a variable. So let's start with that variable my transform and of course this is our transform so it's going to be a type transform a transform component okay now we're working with NPCs particularly if it was an enemy we usually have a target of type transform so just like before we can access the position of this transform okay You could also use this as a vector 3, but because I am specifically going to be targeting the player, this is the enemy script targeting the player, so I'm just going to use the player transform as a whole rather than the vector 3. Okay, so there we have a couple of them. So that's us. MPC player. Okay, there's a start. Now, when we're dealing with movement, we usually move at a certain speed. So let's create a variable for that. Bar move speed. This will be a type float. And it's a bit slow, but I'll set it at a default of 6. We'll see what happens there. Okay, so we want to cache our transform. So let's say my transform equals transform and there we have it that's the extra coding that the reference was talking about all done so now anytime we want to talk to our transform component on the game object that this script is attached to we just simply use my transform and then there's no get component working behind the scenes it's just a bit more optimal less work for the processor to do with each update okay so let's look at moving first we have a transform position. Well, what do we want to do to it? We want to move it. Go plus equals. Now, remember vector threes? I said we had directions as well as space and local space. And if you look at the Unity scripting reference for vector three, it will give you vector three dot forward. Now this is a world space forward. We want to be going forward in relation to our transform. So we don't use vector 3. We use our transform forward. Okay? Our transform forward comes out in a small vector. So our transform forward 0, 0, 1. Okay, 
case. That's not very fast at all. So this is where we multiply that vector by our move speed. Now this is happening every update, every loop, every frame cycle. So if we're running at 60 cycles a second, so for 60 times in one second, we're going to be multiplying, I mean, we're going to be moving our transform at 6 times 1 in the forward. That's every 6 frames. This thing is going to launch. So we need to slow it down and make it relative to our time, delta time. Okay, let's just save that out and see that working. So if we look at our NPC, we have our inspector variables here, our transform and our target and our move speed. Now let's just hit play. Pause it first of all. Now in the start function we set our transform equals our transform. So that has been populated, that variable there. If we click on that. Sure enough, it's lighting up us. That is us. Well, that is the NPC. Right? Okay, so we continue to play, and there we have it. We have the NPC moving along his forward. Now let's turn it around. As you can see, he's moving on his forward. Okay? And he's moving at the rate of move speed. So let's turn that right down. Oh, it's moving quite slowly if I lift that at one. So there we have it. Basic movement. Okay. So for in this example, I'm going to have the enemy chase the target around. Our enemy is going to chase the player. So looking back to our last script that we just created, we have an example of how we can reference our enemy and our player and create a local direction based on that information. So let's work that out. So, let's have a now we're going to work with rotation. Create a variable. This is going to be our look direction. This is of type vector 3. And this is going to equal our transform position minus our player position. It's our target. Oops, my transform position. Let me start again. Sorry, backtrack, mucked it up. Okay, it's in relation to ourselves. So we take the target position, and to make that position from world space to local space, we want to make it in relation to ourselves. So we take away our trend, our position. Let's wait until it's not working. My transform position. Okay, so this is giving a direction to the target in relation to us. Now we have a direction, we can create a rotation. Our look rotation is going to be fed by our vector 3 direction. And then finally, we're going to say my transform, the rotation, is going to equal our calculated look rotation. So this is pretty much the same as what we just did in the last few videos. So let's test it out. I have an error because my IntelliSense is not working. Oh, there's no errors, it's just pointing up. Now, as I said, we have my transform 
which is populated within the script. So essentially we could even make that private. There's nothing we need to play with there. Because as soon as we initialize, we're assigning that value anyway. So let's make that private. That's out of the way. Now the target is a different matter. At the moment we have to absolutely assign our target in the inspector. Because if we don't, and we try and hit play, we're trying to access information from that target. And as you can see, we don't have one there. We have an unassigned reference exception. So I will show you how to find the player through game object find and get component later. But for now, you must remember, drag and drop your player into the target. So that is going to be our target for this example. Alright, so let's move a few things around so we can see things being affected. The NPC is currently looking that way, so if we grab our enemy, move him to the side. Let's even rotate our enemy to look at us. There we are. So let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, I'll pause that. Let's see what's happened. So our enemy, our NPC, has rotated to the vector 3 direction, which is where the player is, and then he started moving towards him. There we go. He's seeking a missile. And as you can see there, there's something going on. The colliders don't seem to be working as we expect. They're merging. Even if we move the player around. There we go. He's chasing him. What's in there? So why is that collider not working? We can show this in another example. Let's just say I create a cube. This is going to be a wall. Okay, obviously a physical barrier. Something that's not supposed to be walked through or penetrated. So let's scale it up. Let's make it 10 wide, 2 high, 1 thick, and that's good. So we have our wall, let's even give it that. There we go. Let's tightly it off, let's just set it to the same scale. Okay, a nice looking little brick wall. Now let's put our player behind the brick wall. Let's save our scene. Always save. Hit play, let's see what happens. So he turns, he looks, and he's gone through the wall. Must be a ghost. So, what's happening there, and why does this happen to so many people? How can we fix it? 